Hello, people. Hope you're doing good. Uh, I want to just apologize for no video last week. Uh, I had a really bad cold. I was tired. I had zero energy to record a video. Uh, I'm still recovering from it, but I've got a bit more energy now. I feel like I'm ready to uh, record a video. Today, we've got a double review of two Marvel projects. I've just finished the Marvels and Loki Season 2. Let's get into it. Let's start off with the Marvels. The Marvels is another formulate bang average Marvel movie. Where have we heard that before? The movie has plenty of interesting ideas. So many, in fact, that there's enough here for so many movies. And the most disappointing thing is, is that the movie introduces them, maybe gives them one scene of development, and then just pushes it to the side. And it's so frustrating because there is so much potential here. Some plot devices are also just not used well at all. The whole power, power entanglement thing creates some pretty cool fight scenes. The fight scenes in this were pretty cool. I did like them. But that's about it. In fact, in the third act, it's basically just dropped and explained away with one lazy line of dialogue. Like, it, it was so lazy how they explained that away. It was really disappointing because during the action scenes, it was really fun. And that was it, really. It didn't really add much to the story. And also, as I said with the plot lines, the character relationships are interesting as well. I like Carol Danvers and Monica Rambeau's relationship. The fact that Captain Marvel went away for so many years, didn't see her. How would they react seeing each other again? Miss Marvel. Looks up to Captain Marvel. How does she see her as the, the person that she is? How does she react? There's interesting ideas here. But again, the movie just doesn't seem to want to develop them. However, I do think some characters were improved. Carol Danvers is greatly improved. She's really unlikable in past projects. But in this, she has more humanity. She has some guilt in her heart. It, it makes her more human and relatable and likable. And you can see her guilt for what she did to the Kree how she's not seen Monica Rambeau in so many years, the girl that she feels for not seeing her. It's something. It gives her humanity and a good art to have. Miss Marvel was also great, and it's no surprise there. This is the movie that defined her as the superhero for Marvel, that you could see in a bigger team like a Young Avengers. And so if there ever is a Young Avengers movie or project, I wouldn't mind seeing her in that, because she's great in this movie. However, the other characters are completely wasted. Monica Rambeau has a good little plot line with Carol Danvers. But apart from that, she could basically be cut out of this movie. She has hardly anything to do. She has her big sacrifice moment at the end. Big spoiler alert there, sorry, but yeah. And that's it. She, she could basically be cut out. Nothing much would change. Nick Fury. Oh my word. I am, oh, what have they done to this character? He's basically just the comedic guy now. Like, he's just quipping all the time, making jokes. This one scene where him and other people are going to die, and he's still making jokes. Like, it, it, it's so jarring because the version we see of him in Secret Invasion, all serious, you know, he, he we need to save the planet. And when it's like the entire universe, the entire planet, once again, is in danger. And he's joking around. What have they done to this character? It's so annoying. And also, the villain is one of the most forgettable villains of the MCU. Darben, uh, I think her name is. What a weak villain. She has one good scene of development with Captain Marvel. And we get a sense of why she hates her. For like one scene and that's it. It never goes further and her power is nothing more than creating portals <laughs> that's it she can push people away with her giant hammer that's it she she was an awful villain i also think the actress zora ashton i think that's how you say it sorry if i pronounced that wrong uh, she just really isn't doing a good job she was way too over the top so over the top that I just could not take this character seriously at all. She didn't feel like a threat. However, the three main leads are really where this film has some heart. The actresses have some brilliant chemistry. They were 
so well together. Their banter, their conversations really hit just because they feel real because of the performances and the chemistry. All of the actresses are doing a pretty good job. Iman Vellani as Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan. I loved her in the show and I loved her in this. In fact, I think if people haven't watched Miss Marvel, they'll probably want to watch it now because of her because she's just so good in this movie. Like, I've seen a lot of reviews, really bad ones, and they've pretty much all been praising her performance. Brie Larson and Tiona Paris are also pretty good as well. They do a pretty good job. I think this is the best Brie Larson has been as Captain Marvel. But when you put them alongside Iman Vellani, they don't hold a candle because Vellani is just bringing so much energy and flipping heart to this movie. And technically, the Marvels is fine. The direction is incredibly basic. There's hardly any personality. But it, 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 it does the job, at least. The editing is sometimes a mess, and it's very clear that there are reshoots at times. But to be fair, in stuff like the action scenes, it was fine on that level. But the CGI sometimes, woohoo! You, you can really feel the pain these CGI artists are going through at the moment. Some of the CGI in this looked completely unfinished and terrible. And I, I really do feel bad for the artists. Sometimes the models of Carol Danvers flying look horrible, look like some weird Microsoft Paint filter around her. Sometimes the green screen slash blue screen was terrible, especially in one scene where this massive action set piece is happening. Goose, the flirking cat, looks like a Looney Tunes character, a 3D Looney Tunes character sometimes. It looked terrible. I like there's these other flirking things that come out later in the movie. They look terrible too. Like, you, you can really, really feel the pain that these CGI artists are going through at the moment. And I really hope they can get some better working conditions soon because they're getting most of the blame and they don't deserve it. It's really not their fault, to be honest. So overall, The Marvels is another disappointing entry to the MCU. It has plenty of interesting ideas, some great character moments, some very entertaining action scenes, which are the reason why this film is watchable and entertaining at times. But if you're looking for an amazing story or anything like that, Unfortunately, you are not going to get that at all. It's another cliche formulate Marvel movie that I'm getting very sick and tired of seeing now. Marvel just needs to change now. It, all the weight is on Deadpool 3's shoulders now. If that flops, which I don't think it will, but ooh, if that flops and if it's bad, then Marvel is in massive trouble if they weren't already now. So the Marvels, you could probably skip it if you want. You don't have to watch it. If you're trying to get back into the MCU, this is certainly a project that will not get you back into it. I'm unfortunately going to give the Marvels a middle of the road 5 out of 10. Probably one of the worst Marvel movies in recent times. Quantumania was worse, but... Oh, the Marvels was so disappointing, man. But luckily... There was one great MCU project that finished recently, Loki Season 2. Now, Loki Season 2, this is what I expect from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. An interesting story with a wacky concept, great arcs for the characters and the main character, visually brilliant, directions great. This is what I expect from Marvel. And this season has solidified Loki as the best MCU show without a doubt. What I really like about the show is that it never stops. This tension in every episode. I really like how they structure the series in this season. Pretty much just like a mini subplot for each episode that affects the bigger overall plot in many ways. And I feel that's a good way to go about these Marvel shows, if I'm being honest. The first three episodes do that really well. And then 4, 5, and 6 basically go way deep into the main big plot line and kind of throw away those small subplots, which I think is good because the first half is incredibly crazy, incredibly fast-paced, can get a little bit jarring sometimes and a little bit confusing. But I think the second half really slows it down and that's where the tension starts to build up. And that's where this show... Voice cut there. <laughs> the, that's where the show really hits emotionally. 
Loki is one of the best characters in these latter MCU projects. And it has been confirmed pretty much now that this is Tom Hiddleston's final outing as the character. And if it is, then he went off with a bang. Because this is the best he's been as this character. It's like he just said, if I'm going out, I'm going out on a high. And he went out on that high. He's so good in this show. Amazing. But Loki, as I said, is the best character in these latter MCU projects. He actually has an arc that fits his character. And the ending is, I don't want to spoil anything, but very emotional, very sad, but understandable. It kind of fits into his whole motivation from previous MCU projects. The fact that he's always wanted the throne of Asgard. And something happens at the end of this show where he kind of gets what he wants, but not in the way that he wants it. And I think that's good because it's a redemption art for one of the MCU's best villains. But you also keep some sort of sadness to it for what he sort of deserves because of all the bad stuff that he's done. And I really like that they did that. I think that was a very poetic, beautiful ending for the character. The other side characters I thought were really good in this as well. Mobius, I loved in the first season. I think I like him even more in this one. I really like some of the scenes with him. I like his arc. I love his final scene. I think his final scene was very good, very emotional. In fact, all, all the characters have a good ending scene and great moments. Phone just went across the table there. It's, it's poetic. It's lovely. You like all these characters and... These are probably some of like the only few memorable characters in Phase 4, Phase 5 of the MCU. And I also think the villains in this were really good too. Miss Minutes is incredibly creepy in this. She has a lot more to do in this season. And wow, <laughs> for something that's supposed to look cute, whew, 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 she, she is creepy. Renslayer as well, again, you get a motivation. She gets what, des what she deserves at the end, which is very satisfying. I can't kind of just say, this is one of the best looking MCU projects we've ever had. I'm so glad they used a lot more practical sets and backgrounds to give, to make this show feel real, to make the TVA, the whole universe feel real. Because that's something I think that's lacking in near enough every Marvel project, really. There's just always green screen, blue screen, CGI everywhere. And, you know, it, it looks like it was made out of computer sometimes, so... I'm glad they went for a few more practical effects in this. And even when the CGI is on screen, it looks brilliant. Especially the final moments, which is pretty much all CGI, understandably. But that's where it's used well. It's visually beautiful. And I think it shows that, you know, if you actually cut down on the CGI a bit, the artist can get a lot more done better. Learn that, Marvel, please. And I think this show also proves that if studios actually stop meddling with people's projects, they can actually create some brilliant stuff. This is apparently the first MCU project to have zero reshoots, which is brilliant. I want to see that report more and more and more in the future. Unless the movie or show is bad, of course, that's fine. But with this, they stuck to their guns and they made a brilliant season. They made a brilliant show. And they didn't undermine what happened in the last season or anything else that's happened. They know what they want to get to, but they just need to ask themselves, well, how do we get to that and make it intriguing? So like Quantum Mania, where we're like, okay, we want to get to this, but let's just, you know, cruise our way through it. You know, let's just make it uninteresting. Let's just get there as quickly as we can. This, this show actually took its time, gave Loki and the others some character, more character, Made them interesting and likeable. And I love that. Marvel, please stop intervening with these shows and projects, please. But if I'm going to get into my problems with this show, uh, I do think Sylvie didn't really get a proper conclusion. It's weird because I think she was better in this season than she was in season one. But she only gets a proper ending. She gets one final interaction with Mobius. And that's it. She just walks off. I don't know, maybe she's turning up at a future project or something, but... It was still very frustrating to not see her get a very nice ending that she deserves, really. I also thought Victor Timely was a bit annoying at times. Jonathan Majors is great as the character, but 
he, he does this like stuttering thing like time is everything and I, I, it, I didn't mind it at first but it, it kind of got really annoying over time and I, they kind of dropped it a bit which is fine but still whenever he did it it was incredibly annoying I wish they just didn't do that to his character it, it's, it's kind of like the mad scientist cliche at this point that they look dumb but hey yo it, it was still a decent character anyway so yeah Loki season two. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to spoil it either because if you love the first season, I can promise you now you will love this one. And I think this is the one Marvel show where you can watch. It impacts the MCU really well, and it's incredibly interesting. It features one of the best characters that the MCU has ever had, and it makes him better and gives him an arc and development that he deserves. And I loved it. If you haven't watched the second season of Loki or the first one, please do. They are the one Marvel TV show that I would highly suggest you watch when you can. And I love this season. And I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. This is what the MCU, MCU should be. Brilliant storytelling that impacts the MCU in big ways more than it should. And guys, that is it for the end of this double review. I hope you all enjoyed if you have seen any of these two projects, let me know what you thought. Did you like them? Did you not? Let me know in the comments. Always love to hear your thoughts. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. I don't know what the next video is going to be. I think it might be another double review. Two films coming out next week. Looking forward to seeing them. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a good day. And see you later.